It's a new horizon. God has given you a new horizon. And you might not really comprehend or understand what that means. Um, how many of you have been out on the ocean in a vessel, a sailing vessel, a ship, or a boat? Now, if it's a very large boat, they call them ships. All, all the Navy guys say, yes, that's what they call them. It's not a boat. It, uh, it's a ship. It's not as prevalent, but if you're on a smaller vessel and there is rough seas and the boat is doing this, you know, some of you, you're getting seasick just watching that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember one of the first times I was doing that, I was, we were on a, a dive boat and it really was a dive boat. <laughs> But they used for diving. <laughs> and so, you know, the on top of on top of the waves and the uh, rocking and, and everything, there was also a an exhaust leak and so the diesel fumes were coming up through where divers were and and uh and it was it wasn't long and there was a number of us that were feeding the fish over the side of the rail. <laughs> well, yeah, and the captain, he has this brilliant idea. He says, you know, he said, if you would just focus on the horizon instead of the waves, he said, that will help. So I did that, and it did help because I'd had nothing left to feed the fish. <laughs> And I was thinking, why didn't he tell me that sooner? <laughs> Oftentimes, when we're not focused on where we're going, and you're not really paying attention, you're just traveling, and you're not really knowing what the destination is. Your life is... Oftentimes, just like that dive boat, it's up and down, back and forth, and you're being tossed, the wind and the waves, and everything that comes your way, it seems like your life is moved, and it's hard to grasp and remember what God has spoken and has given to you in Jeremiah 29, a portion of Scripture that you know well, a portion of Scripture that has been spoken, that has been promised, and you've heard this, and it is something that you will receive this morning and hang on to is God's Word. God's Word will not return to Him void. He sent His Word, and will accomplish what He sent His Word to accomplish. And we thank God for His Word. It's yes and amen. And so we can apply God's Word to our life. We can hang on to what he's saying to us this morning in verse 11, chapter 29. The book is Jeremiah. And that verse 11, chapter 29, is, is something that you have grabbed a hold of and you've listened to. I want you to do it again today. Will you do that? Will you apply God's Word to your life this morning? Will you allow God's Word to just do what it's supposed to do, to find life, to find hold, to find provision, to find strength? So he says here in verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. God wants to give you a blessed future. His word says that, he, that you would prosper and be in good health. That's God's will. A lot of times there are folks that they're wading through all kinds of things in their life. And they're wondering, where are you, God, in all this? Why am I going through these troubled times, these difficult times? Is not your word that you have a future and a hope for me? That, God, you want to prosper and, and cause me to be in good health? Is that not your promise? And, and a lot of times, 
because we're in that season of the storm, or there's things in our life that is happening and happening around us. I was just praying with somebody this morning that they are, they're going through a difficult time. And they said, I'm focused on the word. I'm praying and I'm asking God to give to me the help and the direction. But they're still under the throes of the enemy's attack. And so my, what first came to my spirit, what first the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, there's an open door. And so I asked his brother, I said, I'm going to pray with you. And we're going to ask God to reveal where the enemy's coming in. Because this attack is coming in. And if you are covered and you have this covering over you, then, uh, then where is the enemy? Where is the enemy's attack happening? Have you ever been in this cycle of a storm? It's kind of like this. How many, the wash machine that you have, it has a spin cycle. And how many of you have the heavy-duty spin cycle? <clears throat> we have this wash machine, wonderful wash machine. It was given to us. It's a it's a really high-end wash machine. I, you know, never never bought one like that. And it's you know an LG, and it has all the fancy stuff you know that's, that those wash machines have and. And it did good for a while. It did just what it's supposed to do. Put in dirty clothes, come out clean and wet. But a few years ago, there, 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 was, there was a breakdown in its brain or somewhere. I don't know where. And what would happen, it would go through this unbalanced mode. And it really wasn't unbalanced, but that's what it would show up on the little screen, unbalanced and it would go through the cycle where it would pour in a bunch of water and then try to spin and it would stop. Pour in a bunch of more water and then spin and then stop. And then it would completely stop and with the clothes still soaked in water with this unbalanced load message. So I said to my lovely bride, we need to get another wash machine. She goes, but it's a good wash machine. It's done what it's supposed to do. I said, well, it's not doing it now. She goes, well, can you fix it? So, you know, you, you, you do what every intelligent man <laughs> would do. You Google it. <laughs> oh, to fix. Stupid wash machine. <laughs> and I capitalize stupid. <laughs> and sure enough, the model shows up. You know, that's the first, uh, first in the line. Okay, stupid wash machine. That LG stupid wash machine. There it is. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> And it gives you instructions, all the different things that you can do. Well, it could be out, out of balance because this, you know, the, the springs that hold the, 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 the washer, the big, the big tub, it's, they're, they're broken or they're, they're loose. And so, okay, we, I order them, you know, so I just do that. And, and it takes a lot to take this thing apart, you know, because I didn't really know how to take it apart. But, you know, I ended up taking it apart, really took it all the way apart. And I, then I, in the process of taking it apart, I found out you don't have to do all that. You can do all this from the bottom. <sighs> Hence, stupid wash machine. <laughs> so I put the spring tensioners on there, and it's good to uh, put that thing back up and throw the clothes in there and, and you know, fire that thing up again. And, and you're with, with great hope that it's going to do what it's going to do, it's supposed to do, and, and uh, you know, and, and, it, and, and it gave me false hope because it worked, I think, four times. <laughs> then went right back to what it was doing before. So I go back to Google. How do I really fix stupid wash machine? 
and it gives you another insight. It says, well, the, oftentimes the computer, the main computer, the brain, is, is uh, malfunctioning and you need to replace it. So I find different places that have that available and, uh, and you know, go make phone calls and say, hey, do you have this part or uh, how much is it going to cost? And they give me the price of the, the, the brain. And I'm, so I take that back to, to my lovely bride and I say, okay, the time and the money that we're going to have into this, we could have bought a new wash machine. But I will go ahead and this is what it says. I'm going to try to fix it. Okay? Okay. So I did the same thing. And now, because I know how to take that thing apart, all the way apart, and this time I had to, to get to where all the wires hook up and everything is placed in order, and we put that thing together, and, and then you're hoping I'm going to plug it in, you know, I'm not going to get mm, fireworks and nothing smoking and everything is doing and then you plug it in the lights come on bling, and you know and and then with with great anticipation to put the clothes in there and you know hit go through this hit the right buttons and it fires up and it's doing well again and I'm thinking this has got to be it this there's nothing else there's nothing else it could be because there's nothing else in this whole entire thing that it could be and and no the brand new brain did the same thing on the stupid wash machine and the perpetual unbalanced load spin cycle And there it sits. <laughs> Nombre de Padre Villisman. <laughs> the Lord used that speaking to my life that a lot of times we're trying to fix. something the past we're trying to renew overhaul something that we're dragging along hopefully we can take that hurt and turn it into blessing the Lord is saying this morning I want to give you a new horizon I want to give you a new future I want to bless you with a new hope, something that has been released for you, that the past will not taint, the past cannot touch. But what he has for you, what is ahead, is something so wonderful, so overwhelming of a blessing. This new horizon. And as he began to quicken me and I began to contemplate those things that, that in, in our life, in our hearts, I was saying, Lord, I am so ready for breakthrough. I am so ready for change. How many are with me this morning? So ready for breakthrough. So ready for change in some of these areas of our life. And then he reminded me, he said, I'm, I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready. I'm tired of this unbalanced load. I want the new and he asked me this question, so how did you get there? He said, go back to Jeremiah. I want you to go back to Jeremiah. Yes, that is my thoughts. That is my purpose. That is my blessing of peace and a future and a hope. But how did my people get to where they were in that place of pain? of problems, of frustration. And so we pick it up in verse 10, just one verse back. And he said, the Lord says this, after 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good works towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and hope. Verse 12, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, this makes a lot of sense when you read it in context and you know what he's saying. Because they were in Babylon, they were in captivity. How many of y'all been in captivity before? 
How many have been in that place where there was stuff that was happening, you pressed in, you were overwhelmed, you were walking in, in hurt and in pain or in bondages, and you know what it is to be in that Babylonian captivity where everything was destroyed. And he said this, he said, after 70 years, after a set amount of time, and there was a very specific time, and God is always about time. Someone say it's about time. And he, he began to quicken me how I got to Babylon in different areas. They're not all the same. There's some areas in my life, that, the pain, the problems, the hurt, the disappointment, the disillusionment, the frustration, the fear. Some of those things that, that had happened to me is, is because I moved there. I moved to Babylon. I did it. I'm the one. Can't blame it on anybody else. You know, a lot of people are sitting back, you know, oh, the devil did that. Man, the devil did. And, and, and you, know, you want to know the truth? There are times that the devil sits back and said, man, I didn't even think of that. That's a good one. I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> we did it. Turn to someone and say, you done did it. <laughs> There are places in our life, there are things in our life, we have nobody else to blame. I'm trying to be honest here this morning and not helping. I did it. I'm the one that made that bad decision. I'm the one that made that bad choice. I'm the one, that, those words came out of my mouth. I'm the one that put myself in the situation, the circumstance. I put myself in Babylon. That's where the children of Israel will because they turned away from God. They turned their back on God. They went so far to serve other gods, to worship other idols, bowed down to other gods, turned away from him completely, no longer was praying, no longer was worshiping, totally in a backslidden state. And God allowed them, because of their sin, because of their disobedience, because of their rebellion, they no longer had covering, no longer had protection. And the enemy came in through that open door. And then after, they're in that place of bondage and pain and suffering. They cry out to God. And he answered. And he redeemed them. And he rescued them. And he brought them back home. He restored them. Gave them a future and a hope. And that's what he's saying. I know you've been in Babylon. I know you've been in this place. But I'm going to return to you because that's my heart. My heart is to bless you. My heart is to give you a future and a hope. My heart is to redeem you. Even though I'm the one that did it. There are, the second arena of the reason why some are in Babylon and they're born into it. There's no fault of their own. It's not something that they did. It happened to them. They were placed in a position that was not their choice or their decision. But nevertheless, they found themselves there. And the Lord says to you that he will redeem. He will rescue. He will heal. And he'll bring you out. And he'll take care of it. He proclaimed, and it, it, here's, here's a lot of the hurt that hangs on, and I get this because there have been things in my life, there's been offend, offense, there's been attack, there's been very specific things that were leveraged towards me and my family. <gasps> I can't believe that, Pastor. I know. For me to move back into the place of provision and anointing and healing, I had to forgive. I had to forgive and then bless. That's how you know if you've really forgiven somebody, you can pray that God blesses them. And some of you are saying, well, yeah, I would like to pray blessing. 
Bless them, Lord. <laughs> Do it again. You ever love somebody to death and just taken too long? Some of y'all get that. Some of y'all, what? Never mind. I had to get on my face and with sincerity because you, you walk through the motions, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them, Lord. I, I, I ask you, Lord, to take away the, the frustration, the anger, because they hurt me. And they, they, were in the, they were not just wrong, they were on the other side of wrong. And they really messed me up. And I, I, I walked through those, those emotions, and, 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 and the Lord said, pray for blessing on them. <sighs> begin to show me if I really have forgiven them then I can bless them it takes a while sometimes how many times do you have to forgive somebody See, some people will say this you know I forgave them and I drove on and there's no problem you know I did that years ago why is there still anger why is there still frustration? You might have to ask God to forgive them, and you might have to walk through that forgiveness. It might be 20, 30 times a day. It might be 20, 30 times in an hour until you can truly be released of that. It's a process. Some would say process. And that process is the Lord working through me and giving me the ability to do that because it's not within my own capacity. It's not within my emotions or my mind to be able to do that. It is something that's God-given. God has got to give to me that ability. I don't have it. And when I choose to allow him to wash through me, then, he, then, then that scripture, that promise that the Lord has given will be fulfilled. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. And I need some forgiveness. I need lots of forgiveness. So, Lord, help me forgive. So when I'm born into those things and those things are done to me, I, I'm still in that place of frustration and pain. I'm still in that place of hurt and anger. And I've got to say, Lord, help me to release that. Help me to forgive so I can be released, so I can walk in the newness, so I can hang on to this new horizon that you have for me. Yes, Sometimes it's what I did. Sometimes I was born into it. Sometimes I just had a bad travel agent. I got bad advice. <laughs> Hanging out with the wrong crowd. How I many you know what I'm talking about there? I have some friends. How I many got some friends? They're really good friends when they're doing good, but when they're not doing so good, they're the friends that really get you in trouble. You know what I mean? They just... And... and uh, we get those we get those times of man I wish I wouldn't have listened to that I, I wish I would have done something different but nevertheless we still end up in the same place and God still will forgive release bring healing bring provision bring strength bring renewal he'll bring you out and bring you back to the place of promise and the place of blessing to return to you and give you what he said, I'll give you a future and a hope. Now, oftentimes we see glimmers of that and we see the horizon. And we see, yes, I know it's there. I know it's for me. I know that he, it's, it's just out of reach and I know I need to grasp that. But Lord, what do I do to get to where you want me to be? This is, I no longer want to hang out in Babylon, but I'm not yet to Zion. I'm stuck in Egypt. I'm on the way, but I'm not quite there. I'm so glad you asked that question because that just happens to be page two. See how that works? You ask. And I was wondering how I was going to get there, but you're helping me this morning. You got to follow your new horizon. First of all, you understand the direction that he's given to you. You understand that this is where he's taken you. 
you got to follow it. You've got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. He'll speak to you. He'll say, this is what I'm having. This is what I have for you. This is what I want for you. And then to begin to, out of obedience, to trust him. To be able to follow your new horizon, number one, you've got to break free from the victim mentality. I'm going to say that again because there's a lot of us that need to hear that. We need to break free from the victim mentality. That oh, it's, it's, it, I am the one that is hurt. I'm the one that everybody doesn't. I'm the one that is always at the bottom. I'm always, always the one, the last, and, and nobody understands. Or I, I, I always have this fall or this failure. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna amount to anything. I'm never gonna be free from these chains. And, and I'm always gonna in this place that the Lord really doesn't help me. He helps everybody else. That's the victim mentality, and that's where Satan would have you to dwell. Because if you will stay in that mindset. He can have that dark cloud follow you wherever you go because you're looking in and always looking inward, always looking to the pain and the problem instead of the provision, the help, and the glory, and the holiness, and the healing, and the power. We always are inverted instead of saying, Jesus, cause my focus to be what? On the horizon instead of yesterday and the brokenness and the hurt. I've got to break free from the victim mentality. How do I do that? Fear is not my future. Say that with me. Fear is not my future. Praise God for the 15 people. Now the rest of you. Say it with me. Fear is not my future. That's a proclamation saying, I'm, this, is, this is what I used to be, but it's not my future. Say this with me. Sickness is not my story. Again, sickness is not my story. I'm not going to be defined by brokenness. I'm not going to be def- Satan is not going to define me. He's not going to place that upon me in my mentality that I'm always going to be sick. I'm always going to be broken. Because I know who the healer is and I know the promise of this healing. And Pastor Andy has reiterated that week after week after week that he is the healer and he desires to heal us. And that, that healing is released has not has nothing to do with what I can or what I can't do. It's already been paid for 2,000 years ago at Calvary. It's already done. It's not something that needs to be conjured up. It's already happened. And I am healed. So sickness is not my story. Number three, heartbreak is not my home. Say that with me. Heartbreak is not my home. I'm not going to dwell in brokenness. I'm not going to dwell in the faults and the failures of yesterday. I'm not going to dwell in what happened. Oh, the enemy would like to dredge that up. He would like to cause you to remember every fault and every failure He would like to dismantle marriages and relationships. And here's how he does it. He'll remind you of the faults and the failure of your spouse of yesterday to drag that into today. This morning, ask God to renew your mind and make that proclamation. I'm not going to make heartbreak my home. I'm not going to dwell in that land. And number two, if you're going to follow the new horizon, you've got to launch out into the deep you got to launch out into the deep. That's a very specific piece of history that if you have not heard about this, this story, you're going to be blessed. These fishermen, the disciples have been fishing a while. In fact, they fished all night. Now, this is not with a, a pole, fishing pole and a lure. No, the way they fish is with nets. The bottom of the net is weighted. Top of the net has some kind of buoyancy device. And when that net is let down, it's straight down, top to bottom. Buoyancy loading on the top, lead weight on the bottom. They'll take this net and they'll make a big circle they, as they're 
in their boat. They're making, they're rowing in a big circle. And while they're making this big circle, they're letting the net out. See? And they come back together, and then they draw that net together. And everything in that circle is gathered, and they're able to pull it onto the boat. And they're doing this for hours. They fished into the night. Nothing. They moved to another direction. They moved to another area. Nothing. Hey, let's go back where we were last year about this time. And man, that school of fish, we did okay. Let's go there. They, they rode all the way out there, put out their nets. Nothing. Not a single minnow. They could not find Nemo. Nothing. So they're tired. They've been up all night. They got, they're up on the shore, and they're mending their nets, you know. And, and here's Jesus. He shows up. He said, boys, I want you to launch out into the deep. Man, we were just out there. Really? Load them up. Let's do this one more time. Okay. You know, it's just like, it's, it's just like oftentimes in my life, I've been trying, I've been doing what God asked me to do. I've been frustrated. And then he says, I want you to do it one more time. And he always asks at the most inopportune moment, always when you're wore out, always when you're spent. Oh, one more time. One more time? Yes. Okay. In fact, they were complaining a little bit. You, you read the account there, and especially in Luke. and said, we've been doing this all night. They're not there. And so Jesus comes up with his brilliant plan. He said, I want you to put the net on the other side of the boat. Now, it's not the fish are on the other side of the boat. Here is what he's doing. Here's the hope because the tackle was designed on that ship, on that boat, the tackle, how that rail of that boat was designed, that the railing, the, 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 how it was built, the net was let out on the starboard, hooked around, and then pulled in on the starboard. There was all kinds of gear on the leeward side, but had nothing to do with fishing. For them to do it, it wasn't just arduous. It was ludicrous. It was stupid wash machine. For them to do that was very difficult. But we're going to do it because Jesus is asking us to do it. They make one circle. And I'm sure their heart was not in it, and they were frustrated. But how many know, Jesus, as he's saying, I want you to launch out, and I want you to do this, because I'm asking you to do it, and this is how I'm asking you to do it, then you're going to find the blessing. Then you're going to see my hand. And I'm going to show you who's Lord, not over the wind and the waves, but what's inside the ocean, and above the ocean, on the land, and in the air. He is still creator. He's still provider. They let that net out, and guess what happened? It got so full, they were hollering at the people on the shore, you got to help us. Come help us. There are so many fish that our boat is going to sink. Launch out into the deep. You see, your hopes and your dreams are never fulfilled until you take that first step. And trusting him. Hopes, dreams will not be fulfilled until you take that very first step. You can sit on the bank and wonder what would have happened, or you can launch out into the deep and experience the provision. Second thing about that story is the process is unorthodox. You think? Uh huh. 
I found, I found this about Jesus in my life. If I can do it, it's not God. How, how many of you have ever been to an, an art museum or, or some place that, that displays beautiful art? You know, you walk in and you see these paintings and these sculptures. We were, we were down in Charleston and uh, in one of, the, one of the municipalities in one of the buildings, and they had some 200-year-old art on the walls. It was just beautiful paintings, beautiful paintings. And I was telling my son-in-law, I have a litmus test for art. I know how. In fact, I could be the, one of the best art critics ever. I said, this is it. This is how. I know that's art. Because if I can do it, it's not art. And I can't do that, so it's got to be art. If I can do it, it's not God. So it's going to be something that's going to stretch me. It's going to be something that's beyond my concepts or my understandings. It's beyond my purview. And so what I've got to do is that it requires me to trust him and to walk in that faith and that believing that he will not just catch me, but this is where the miracles begin. I will trust him and launch out in the deep. The third thing there about that whole entire uh, process of story He said this to me. He said, I've got to move past the safety of the shallows. I've got to get into the deep, the deep water. I've got to be where he is, and he desires to move. The third thing about following your new horizon, the third thing that that is, the Lord's going to encourage you this morning, the third thing is moving forward requires letting go. If I'm going to move towards, I've got to let go of the things I'm dragging along. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, this will bless you. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. This is verse 13, chapter 3. The book is Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. If you're turning there, I'll give you a moment. 13 is the verse. 3 is the chapter. Philippians. Philippians is the book. He said, brethren... I don't count myself to have apprehended. But this is one thing that I do. I forget those things that are behind, and I reach forward to the things that are ahead. And then I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press on. I let go, and I press on. To be able to let go... I need to understand that the past hurts and the disappointments of the failures will decrease. I'm going to say this again. I want you to follow this. All those past hurts, all the disappointments, the faults in my failures, the bondages, the darkness, all that will decrease the further that they are away from me. So I got to start marching, I got to start moving. Oftentimes, we're sitting there and saying, Jesus, I wish that you would show up and help me with this issue. Lord, that you would cause me to be returned to the provision of your blessing. And he said, my provision of my blessing is in Zion. And until you leave Babylon, you're not going to experience the heavens. You're not going to experience the healing. You're not going to experience the the provision. As long as you're hanging out in Babylon, I've got to get some distance between me and it. And the only way to do that is just start moving towards the blessing, towards the provision, towards the goal. I've got to have selective amnesia. And all the men said, praise the Lord. Selective amnesia is a wonderful thing. And you choose to forget. And you choose to forget something. Now, I I don't suggest you do this in your marriage, men. (laughs) I mean, we already accused of that. See, now, my wife, she, you know, we're on the way home. She says, I, I, I need to go to the store. Do you need anything? And she'll tell me, yes, sir, this is what, what I need. And then, and then I know i got to write it down. Because if I don't write it down, 
I'll forget. But I'm driving, and there's no place to write it down. And there was only two things. Certainly I can remember two things. Right? Don't look at me that way. So, she said, I need, and very specifically, I need some bread, and I need butter. You think, well, the two go together, bread and butter. I said, okay, I can, I can handle that. So here we go, we're there, and I'm, I get in the store, and you know, and, and I, I, of course, when you're, you don't go to the store when you're hungry. How many know that? Now, if they let you eat in the store, that might change. But no, you got to buy this stuff first. And, and uh, so I get home. And I, I take out the ice cream and the fudge. The hot fudge, you know, the ice cream because it goes together, right? <laughs> and she says to me, see, I told you to forget. Where's the bananas and the milk? Never mind. We have at times issues with memory, and we used to be. Come on, the older we get, there's just and there's things that you can do to increase the memory, and there's all these different things they got now that, and you buy this supplement, and you remember things, and remember things that you have forgotten years ago, and uh, and. Uh, in fact, there's this one, this this one individual. He he was at this doctor because he's dealing with a little bit of dementia, and the, and the, the doctor said, "I'm going to give you this supplement that it's going to help. It'll really help you." So he takes. He's been taking it for a week, and his friend comes over, and he said, he "says How you doing?" I said, "I'm doing great. The doctor gave me this supplement. I'm remembering things that I forgot. I'm remembering things that years ago, years ago. I'm remembering. It's so much is coming back to me. It's just awesome. It's it's wonderful." And and the guy says, "What's the name of the supplement?" And he goes, uh, "Um." He said, "He said, you you know that that red flower." With, with like the, the prickly things and the thorns. Yeah, the thorns. He, 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 the guy says, a rose? He said, yeah. Hey, Rose, what's that stuff the doctor's giving me? <laughs> That's the first time some of you smiled all day. <laughs> we... We try to remember some things. We can't. Why is it that we remember the things that bring pain? Why is it that we remember things that hurt? That we're wading through, that we suffer? Why is it we remember every single stupid word that somebody said? This is where the Lord will help us. I'm going to choose to forget those things. And when the enemy starts dredging it up, I'm going to say, Jesus, cause me to be released of that. I forgive. Lord, help me forget. I'm going to put some distance between me and that stupid stuff so I can hang on to the purpose of this new horizon. I'm going to remind myself of the greater blessing that's ahead. And in doing so, I won't be so overwhelmed with what's behind. Lord, show me what blessing is you have in store so I can hang on. 
And the last thing this morning, if we're going to follow that new horizon, we need to keep our eyes on the horizon. We need to keep our eyes focused on where God has and what he has for us and where he's taken us. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm going to focus on Jesus because he is my help. He is my hope. He's my provision. And when it looks really tough and it looks like it's not going to happen, when it looks like things aren't being placed together, I'm going to still look to Jesus. I'm going to still place my hope in him. And my faith is in no other. He is still the one that parts the seas. He's still the one that moves the mountains. And all it takes is one look from him and everything changes. I don't have to rely upon my own strength or my own insight or my own understanding. What I do is I focus my attention on the author and the finisher and he will accomplish what he said he's going to do. And the last thing is, I'm going to look up my redemption draws close. That's what he said when you see these things happening. You need to lift your countenance. Look up. Because your Redeemer and your redemption is drawing near. Would you stand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the new horizon that you have placed in front of each one of these. Something new. Something so phenomenal. So precious. So powerful. Life-changing. And it's in their purview. It's something that they can see. It's something that is on the horizon. But Lord... To get there, we need your help. I'm asking that you would continue to sustain each one of these, each one of these that, that you have brought into this house today, each one of these that has heard this word. I know that there are many that are walking through difficulties. They're walking through hardships. They're walking through family circumstances and situation, their own health, Lord, their, their, own, their own storm. I'm asking, Lord, that you would just renew a heart again. Stir them to cause them one more time to launch out into the deep where you are. To let go of those things that are behind us, looking forward to the things that are ahead, and to cause their focus to be stayed on that new horizon you've given to them. Ask, Lord, that you would en encompass, encapsulate, surround, to bring your encouragement and your strength one more time. Hope renewed in this hour, I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I, I want this message to be more than just something that you have heard because the word of God is going to change everything. I, I want it to be more than, than just something that is encouraging for a moment. But it's my passion as your pastor that each one of you walk in the freedom and the grace to receive the future and the hope and to understand that his blessing, his goodness is for you. That you're able to break free and receive what God has for you in a new horizon. So I'd like to pray for you, for those of you this morning that that's on your heart. And this message was so timely. And it was for you. You've, you're feeling the Lord is speaking to you, giving you hope again saying that these situations, this circumstance, the, the chains of Babylon, the, the, the pain and the disappointments and everything that you have 
been dealing with is, is so temporary. And he's here to rescue. He's re- here to heal, to restore. If that's you this morning and you just would lift your hands and say, Pastor, pray for me because I'm there. I, I, I'm going through something right now and, and I know I know that it's God that's going to make the way. It's God that's going to make a difference. It's God that's going to intervene for me and I, I want to start heading the right direction. That you just lift your hand and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I'll pray for you this morning. Now just leave your hand Lift it to Jesus. It's, it's, not, it's not a man that's going to help you. It's not, a, not any kind of wisdom or insight or counseling that's going to give you direction or, or healing, but it's Jesus himself. And as I pray for you, I'm going to ask that the Lord would just reveal himself to you as who he is and give you the help that you need. So, Jesus, I'm asking right now in your name that you would minister to each one with a desire to receive from you. Lord, I know that you are with them right now, that you've never left them, you've never forsaken them, even in the midst of that storm, even in the midst of that pain. Everything that's going on, you're with them right now, according to your word and the power of your Holy Spirit. So, I, Lord, I know that it's, it's not something of, of abandonment and thinking that I need to get somewhere else so I can be blessed. But, Father, you're with them and walking with them right now. But, Lord, what we're asking and what we're needing today is to break free to be removed from the Babylon, the chains of Babylon, and move back into the Zion and the place of blessing, that new horizon that you have before us. So I'm asking, Lord, that you've given us some insight and some provisions today through your word and some directives. I'm asking that you would just give them the help that they need to start moving forward, to launch out into the deep and to receive the help that you have so that you would rest upon them today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you give him praise this morning if the Lord spoke to you, Lord ministered to you. Now, I open these altars and I would encourage you.